Have you ever wondered if you're actually good at jiu-jitsu? Most people do competitions to see if they're any good, try and get some titles along the way and maybe some prize money, or you could just do a shark tank with other black belts. Turns out, I don't actually compete, so I found four other black belts to beat me up in a shark tank. Relentless pressure, constant movement, and hopefully, I don't get tapped out by some old dude. Let's see how I did. We start this brutal onslaught of a shark tank versus the black belts against Brandon, who I recently just made a video with and, uh, yeah, not my best result. But it's a new day and I'm already in his head because he went for a single and then immediately sat to his butt. Now the reason he did that is because my one weakness that he clearly knows are the heel hooks and any footlock entanglement. My key against him is I have to do outside passing so I have enough distance away from his legs and him pulling me in. One of Brandon's main weapons is he has insane grip strength. If you look at the size of his wrist, it's disproportionately bigger than even his legs. I assume this is just because of his crazy hours on the map, but it could be nighttime activities as well. Either way, I'm able to pull my arm out so I'm safe, at least for now. I'm keeping enough distance away from Brandon and I find a good opportunity to attack by simply rolling over Brandon with the guillotine. This puts me into side control, but he's framing hard against me with that left elbow. This elbow is also preventing my hips from connecting to his, so there's a space between us and he brings his leg in so I have to re-attack and try passing his guard all over again. And this is when things are starting to get grim for me. I'm basing on my left leg, so he attacks from underneath it, putting me into the false reap and now I have to deal with honey hole and an inverted heel hook. The only thing that's saving me from this point is I'm fighting his wrist and hand, so he can't get a full bite over my ankle. Though honestly, it's pretty deadly even from here. The way I'm sitting on my other leg makes me useless, so I can't pummel or do anything, so I have to tap. Not a great start to the shark tank, knowing I still have three other black belts and I've been tapped in under two minutes. Brandon starts trying to elevate me by working a tough shin to shin. He knows if he can get any connection and start scooping under me, I'm pretty cooked. Unfortunately for me, he rotates me to the side and starts attacking my ankle, but this is the one footlock I can actually defend. I feel safe against the ankle lock and I don't have to worry too much until I slip my heel just enough and he decides he's going to start attacking the heel hook. Though I'm lucky, I know the next guy is in so I don't have to tap to that, but I do have to deal with a new black belt already on my back against Hayden. Hayden is the black belt that brought me into ecological training and he has a fetish with holding me into knee bar. Having him on my back isn't great, but he rides a little bit too high and I can shrug him off and I get on top of him. The goal is the same against him where I first want to start by doing some outside passing to get past the guard then look for a submission. Until of course he leaves his head out and I think I can go for the guillotine but he's able to bring his instep in and start turning me. I want to wrestle up from here but unfortunately I run into the wall. I have no chance to wrestle up as my back is pinned against it and this puts him on top of me. I mean I have this whole goddamn gym to use and I decide we should do the shark tank right next to the wall. Not my best planning. He gracefully drags me away from it, but only when it benefits him so he can go straight to mount. I wish he would have done that a little bit earlier. Oh well, I'm already flustered from getting submitted by Brandon and now I have to deal with Hayden going for an arm bar. It looks pretty bad for me in this position, but I'm able to lock my arms up just enough where I can start spinning into him. Until I deal with the same culprit as before, the wall. Then for good measure we go straight into the punching bags as well. Hayden's working on a belly down arm bar and is looking pretty nasty for me. I absolutely cannot rotate or spin out from this position. I mean, where am I going to go? My only choice from here is to hang on and just enjoy the ride, which is some crappy advice I'd only give to wipeouts when they're getting dominated, but it looks like I'm in that position as well. I use a unique defense to keep my arm safe, and I should have really stayed here, because in hindsight, once I turned out from pulling my own arm, he was able to go belly down and I had to tap. But there's no time for sob stories. I go straight to pushing him, hopefully getting to a better position so when the next guy comes in, I'm not completely dominated from the start. That is until Hayden starts bumping my leg and I think the best course of action is to go for my own ankle lock. I bring my other leg over the top so I can pin down his knee, but he's working on the heel hook. It's not that tight from here. I'm working on his foot, he's working on mine, but the time runs out and the next guy jumps on me. My planning couldn't have been any worse. He takes my back against the wall and I'm already forced into another terrible spot. The third black belt is Gus who's extremely big and I made a separate video with him. But what sucks for me is when he took my back, he immediately started with my wrist. Now I have to deal with this crappy position where he's throwing in the hooks, I got punched in the eye, and he's working on a wrist lock. His length makes it extremely easy for him to have some massive leverage and I have to tap quickly this wrist lock, but at least I'll be able to start the round fresh with the new guy. I'd love to wrestle with him, but he's huge, so I use my smaller advantage to dive underneath him. Gus is trying to take a page out of my book by going for a guillotine which is going to prevent me from getting on top. I'm able to get my neck free, but I still have to deal with this massive weight on top of me, so I start diving underneath the leg. Once I can scoop, I shoot my left leg deep. If I can get it deep, it allows me to off-balance him so I'm able to work on top and sweep Gus. If I were any good at leg locks, I should go straight to Honey Hole from here, but he has a pretty tight pinch over my right shoulder, which is locking me into this position. Thankfully, I didn't take my ED pills, so I'm able to limp noodle my arm right out of there, and I'm free from grabbing onto his own neck. He 
he looks for a few attacks like the Kimura, the Guillotine, Arm Drag, all those aren't going to work against me though. What is going to work is this damn wrist control he has over my right hand. This is some serious control where I'm not able to free myself and I have to pull guard just to sweep him over and thankfully in the scramble I'm able to free my arms. I think this is pretty obvious to hear but setting up submissions against black belts in 2 minutes or less is a really difficult task. I'm lucky since I have his half guard extended and I have a deep waist so I can start working the body lock to pass his guard but I know I'm short on time. Gus is doing everything in his power not to let me pass and to hold me here so the next black belt can jump on me and put me through the ringer. Now while you guys continue to watch me get beat up, at least I was doing it in style because I have gear from X Marshall. X Marshall is the sponsor of this video. They create some great looking rash guards, gis, shorts, and other clothing on their website. And with code TYLER10, you can get a discount while shopping for your favorite gear. One of the better things about X Marshall is they're constantly giving back to the community. They sponsor YouTubers like myself, athletes, and they give away gear all the time to people that show promise. So if you want to get some great looking gear, go to xmarshall.com, use promo code TYLER10, and pick up your favorite rash guards. Getting back into the round, I'm going up against the fourth black belt, Andy, after I couldn't get anything done against Gus, so of course, he's on my back. Not only did he start on my back, but he started with a full rear naked choke. And no offense to you, Andy, I like you, but there's no way I'm letting an old man submit me. What I do here is open my mouth so I can make my jaw go lower into his arm. I know if my jaw is over his arm, he probably won't have enough choking pressure to take me out. But he shows off that nice black belt technique level by rolling straight into a calf slicer. It's a great display of technical aptitude from Andy, and he doubles it up by actually trying to get me with the banana split. Thank god I lift weights. My legs are 10 times the size of his scrawny ones, so he can't generate enough force to actually break me here. Once I'm free from the banana split, I start rolling away and I put my shoulders onto the mat. He's doing everything he can to lock up a far side Kimura grip and then over my neck just to hold me in this position. I've been working for over 6 minutes already, so I'm tired. But I'm not too tired to escape his control and I start working up towards the front head until I decide just to use it to sweep him over. But Andy starts shoving those bony little legs into my hip and I let him go. He's trying to back away to freedom and he stands up with a technical stand up and now it's engaging in the wrestling. I've never done Wing Chun but in my opinion this is what it looks like. Andy's framing against me, he's disengaging and keeping me at space but I need at least one win even if it comes at the cost of a 90 year old man so I pick him up with a single leg and gently put him on the floor and I start looking for my passing. I get to the body lock, I'm able to pummel over his legs and go straight into side control and unfortunately, we run out of time. Tough stuff. 